Hi, gang. Um, this is interesting. Um, I've mentioned before, I think, that we did a class like this um, five, six years ago, um, 2018. Um, it was a much different class, though. But one of the things I did at the end of that class, on the very last day, is I kind of drew the curtain back and I talked a little bit about the class itself. Why we did the class, what we were thinking about doing the class. We asked the students themselves if they thought the class was, was a success or a failure or what they got out of the class. Now, obviously, we can't have this conversation with you guys because, again, this is one way. We can't be nice if all of you were on a Zoom call with us to, to, to talk to us, but you can't be. So I thought we, we'd use this last video to talk a little bit about what went into the class, what were some of our decision making, why we decided to do this class. And again, just pull back the curtain a little bit and let you know about a little bit about the decisions that went into the class and, and why we thought the class was important. Now, again, we did a class back in um, 2018. That class was focused only on um, stuff um, up until the 1940s. I think the last um, story we, we, we studied in that class was 1937 or something like that? I forget exactly what it was, but it was it was it was the much older stuff. It was focused specifically on Lovecraft. There were more writers. We didn't do more writers. There was many many more books. We actually did 30 stories instead of the 12 stories in the movie that we're doing this time. And I came away with it very happy. Um, now Peter, who unfortunately has the 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 duty of actually grading papers and seeing what the final grades were. He was kind of disappointed with 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 the uh, with the class, and I wanted to do it, to do it again. I wanted to do it like every two years, and he was very much against it. And one of the reasons he was against it was for very good reasons, and it's the reasons that he asked uh, when we started this class. If you remember the very first um, video that we did, Peter asked a question. That question is, why should we care about Lovecraft in the modern day? Why should we study the works of this white supremacist from? nearly 100 years ago, why is that important? And I didn't have a good answer for Peter at all. But one of the things I kept working at him, kept trying to get him engaged in the weird again. And one of the things I said to him, which apparently resonated because he mentioned it also in the first video, is I said, Peter, you know that today Lovecraft is more popular than he's ever was in his own time. And Peter's like, really? What do you mean by that? I go, oh, there's all sorts of people putting out weird stories. He goes like, 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 like what? And so we went on, we went on, we went on Amazon and we went on Google and we started researching all of the, what we're now calling the new weird. At the time, I wasn't aware of the, of the new weird. So was, so was uh, Peter. We both knew about the original weird stories from the 1920s and 1930s, but we were unaware of this new weird movement. And the more we began to read about the new weird, the more engaged we became and the more we be, it became excited again to do a story like this. Because again, one of the things the new weird does is it not only it not only retells the weird stories, but as we've shown, it basically allows people to go back and look at the older stories and say, if you want to reinterpret this for the modern world, that's great. Go ahead and do that. And it kind of gave us permission to go back to the old Lovecraft stories and say, if you want the, 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 the other to be a story about transgenderism, absolutely you can do that. It, so we really think of the new weird as something that's not just the author, not just the author's intentions, not just the story. It's also the reader. It's the attitude and self-awareness of the reader. The new weird is a way of appreciating not simply new weird stories, but old weird stories too. And in so doing, when we appreciate the old weird from the standpoint of empowerment, cosmic otherness not as a source of dread, but a source of transformation, becoming something new, a new way of connecting with other people as well. Something extraordinary in a positive sense. When we bring that kind of enthusiasm to bear to look at the old stories, for instance, our orange book stories, our four Lovecraft stories at the beginning of our course this semester, we actually have new insights that are very valid for those old stories. For instance, the shadow over Innsmouth, as, as Ryan pointed out, 
Um, the taboo, the dread, the horror in that story, okay, is miscegenation, which is racial mixing. A racial taboo, okay, in uh, late 19th and early 20th century America, the idea that our family may have mixed blood, a mixed racial history, okay, that was the, to the taboo. That was the thing to which dread or fear attached. Or at least that seemed to be part of Lovecraft's intention. But now when we look at it from a new weird standpoint, we see how miscegenation or racial mixing is the salvation of the unnamed narrator. And whenever somebody's not named in the weird, when somebody is unnamed, we know it's everybody. But racial mixing becomes a vehicle for immortality because our main character, the unnamed narrator in The Shadow Over Innsmouth, decides not to kill himself, not to emulate uh, his uncle Douglas who killed himself when he found out more about the family side, the orange side of the family model. Instead, our unnamed narrator decides to rescue his cousin and to answer the call of his grandmother, that voice of his grandmother he hears in his dreams. What lies before him is not something of dread. It's something, it's something, it's almost like something from the Psalms. It's almost something biblical. It's a, it's a cosmic afterlife, a kind of immortality. And that's only possible because of the racial, the racial, the racial mixing, the miscegenation. So in the new weird, the dread attached, the dread attached to cosmic otherness. Instead, now the dread moves away from cosmic otherness. Cosmic otherness becomes actually a form of hope. However painful it might be, however extraordinary the nature of the transformation, the prospect is hopeful and dread now attaches to ignorance, to who we thought and what we thought and how we thought before knowledge intruded. Now knowledge is our friend in the new weird. It's that self-aware dynamic that gets excited about transformation Okay, instead of fear attaching to that prospect of transformation. And there's also the normalization fits into that, the idea that the weird becomes knowable. Uh, again, uh, Lovecraft wrote one of his story, which was literally called The Unknowable. And, 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 and basically the new weird says, no, it can be knowable. If you guys are interested in the new weird, one of the books that we first got when we're looking at the new weird is this book right here, The New Cthulhu. This has the Elizabeth Bear stories that were used for this class. We wanted to have you guys pick up this book, but unfortunately it's not in print currently. There is a copy here at the library though. If you really love the new weird, this is the book to go with. This is the book to go with. Really, really great stories. But uh, we went through this and we began over time. Just, I mean, this has been a really fun class for me and Peter because we were able to find, we when we started this class in January, we're not at the point that we're at now. We did not see half of the things that we see now from it. We saw the empowerment model, but a lot of the little details, a lot of the idea of reversals and creating something new and and, and self-awareness, those weren't necessarily on our mind. We were simply looking at the new years and empowerment model. Let's briefly look at some of these uh, themes. One of the themes or motifs is reversal. In, in uh, Shogoths and Bloom, Professor Harding sees the Shogoths at first as just specimens. He sees them as a potential for career advancement. Then, then when they make themselves known to him, when they connect to his mind, he sees them as a means to an end. Okay, they are monsters he can harness to do what? Defeat racism. It's an opportunity for those who had been slaves to now be masters, and he could ride these shogoths into victory over Nazi Germany. But then, that's not how the story ends. He doesn't, and he does not fulfill the reversal model. 
The reversal model says we, we're merely going to put the person who used to be on the bottom on top. A reversal model simply means I may have been a slave before, but now I'm going to be the master. As tantalizing as and exciting as that is, okay, because I kind of like the idea of riding Shogoths into victory over Nazis, okay, as irresistible as that is, uh, Ryan made the point to me that we're not going to see that in the new weird. Instead, we're going to see a different type of decision, not reversal. And here's the interesting thing is you can go back and actually apply that to the old weird as well. Peter was talking about um, Shadow over Innsmouth. Now, how does Shadow in Innsmouth end? Does it end with the with the deep ones getting their revenge upon the narrator who has called down the U.S. Navy and the FBI upon their town destroying them? No, they open they welcome him with open arms. They forgive him completely and accept him. Isn't that wonderful? Now, again, uh, Lovecraft screaming in my head. No, that's horrible. But that's the power of the new weird. Is again, you can you can find these meanings in the original works that weren't intended. You you, you know, um, uh, when we go back and we look at when we look at old weird, uh, we see the potential. We see the prospects of empowerment. And they're legitimate. We're not reading something into the stories that's not there, but we are definitely noticing and appreciating things that require a certain kind of attitude, an attitude that says cosmic otherness is not the problem, okay? The problem was ignorance, okay? Uh, ignorance is the thing to which fear should properly attach. We, we've introduced this idea of the mundane. Now, in the new weird, fear does not attach to becoming or embracing cosmic otherness. Fear attaches to the prejudice, okay, to the dark side of ignorance. Okay, And we see that very much in Matt Ruff's novel, in which each chapter is a story, particularly in the first story, Lovecraft Country. Okay, the thing that we fear is 1950s Jim Crow America. That, properly speaking, is where fear should attach. That's the mundane. What, what do we mean by that? The injustices we experience and see every day and that we become used to. The way people were used to segregation. They were used to a fundamentally, okay, unjust society. That society that necessitated the green book, by that I mean not the diary in the white people, but the green book was a travel guide, okay, for African Americans, okay? So they could literally, literally navigate Jim Crow America. It's Jim Crow America that deserves our fear and our apprehension, okay? It's Jim Crow America that requires the navigation of the real life green book. So... Oh. It's interesting right. that you bring up the Green Book, though, because, again, the Green Book serves as a model of escaping the patriarchy of Victorian England, though, at the same time. It's interesting that we see these sometimes literal parallels between 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 the Green Book and the Green Book in this case. Um, and that's that's something interesting that pops up once again. By the way, that that was probably a coincidence uh, more than more than anything else. But it is <laughs> interesting that that, that that sort of stuff does pop up now and then that you can you can make these correlations between things i thought no, go ahead no i, I was gonna uh, i wanted to uh bring up our movie annihilation because that was something we debated oh yeah we we, we were uh we were thinking about a movie but you know uh, uh i i didn't know what to do with this movie at first because i had watched it late at night on tv on cable and i had seen it in the theater Okay, and I, I really had, was not paying attention. I'm sure I was drifting in and out of sleep, okay, on the couch. And what I thought I saw was a lot of body horror, almost a Cronenberg. If some of you, some of you are horror fans, you may remember Cronenberg and body horror. And so I didn't make the connection. I didn't see the new weird in it until literally Ryan set me down and said, look, okay, this movie... And this movie epitomizes, it exemplifies some of these 
some of these dynamics that we're looking at in regard to the new year. And by the way, the same exact thing happened with me. Peter says, we're going to do Lovecraft Country. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll read Lovecraft Country. And I read the first chapter of Lovecraft Country, Lovecraft Country, and I was like, what the heck is this? This is not the weird. This is, there is, there is no existential dread in this whatsoever. There's, what's, what's Peter trying to tell me here? This is, this is terrible. I hate this guy's writing style. I hate his pacing and stuff like that. But again, Peter said, keep at it, keep reading it. There's going to, there's more to it than you think. And slowly I began to see what Matt Ruff was trying to do. I began to understand him. I was able to look past my own prejudices. And again, I still think Matt Ruff's uh, writing is horrible. I think it's very flat. I think his pacing is is dreadful. Uh, I'd like him to use a few more adjectives. <laughs> um, but uh, but I recognize it is a work of genius. It is a landmark work in 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 the new weird. It is it is really doing very as I mentioned before in the videos doing really clever things. Same thing with Peter. Peter does not like the violence. He does not like the body horror and gore of Annihilation. He wishes those things were not in the movie, but he also recognizes the movie for what it is. A, a brilliant uh, uh, work on the on the part of Alex Garland to talk about the new weird. Yeah, the issue with Matt Ruff's novel, okay, is not his subject matter, which is brilliant, okay? Uh but the uh but the, the the problem is the writing style the writing style is just straightforward third person adventure instead of the interesting structuring of a lot of our weird stories which gave us sort of a outside narrator who it's at scene not to have any stake in what's going on and then that narrator becomes re revealed as somebody who's much more uh, involved in the story than we realized at first, even more so than the narrator uh, uh, realized. You know, that layering of consciousness, okay, by having multiple narrators, oh, that's so weird, and that's not in Matt Ruff's story. One of the things that makes Annihilation such a successful weird movie is what happened between the original shooting script Okay, and the final version of the movie, which was the introduction of Lomax, the character in the hazmat suit who interrogates Lena. That becomes a framing device, like the framing device of Ambrose, okay, in the story of the white people. Framing devices, like the narrators uh, in the Orange Book stories, okay, in the Call of Cthulhu. The narration in those narrators, it's narrators, what did I just say? The narrators in those stories, they're important. Okay, framing is really important in, in the weird. Um, whereas a straight ahead adventure story is just then this happened and this happened and this happened. And some people might get frustrated with Matt Ruff's style because it's just an adventure story and we don't have that elaborate framing okay of multiple narrative consciousness so the uh th there's the frustration there in but isn't it interesting that the original shooting script of annihilation did not have that layering of consciousness did not have the lomax interrogation well as you mean it said it, the original story was basically a horror adjacent science fiction story basically um uh, so also there is something a term that you used a, a, a lot in our videos called normalization how would you define normalization normalization is something that you see a lot in the new weird it's basically saying it, it's a way of deconstructing the otherness of 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 lovecraft's world lovecraft is very much saying there is the other and by other he sometimes he means african americans maybe women maybe minorities, but they're, they're unknowable. We, there'll, there'll never be a bridge between the two of us. We'll never be able to see eye to eye is really what he's saying in a lot of his stories to some extent. And uh, what a lot of New Weird says is it's different. It's going to be different, but it's not unknowable. That's what normalization really is about. It's saying that um, the weird in this case isn't unknowable. It, it, it's weird. It's different. It's something unique. Um, but it's it's something new, but it's not something that can't be understood or dealt with or or 
are negotiated with. You know, there's a, a beautiful moment, not in the original shooting script, but in the final movie, in which Josie Raddick talks about, in a sense, the choices the team members are making. Uh, Dr. Ventress wants to face the Shimmer. Lena wants to fight the Shimmer. That's not what Josie Raddick decides. And she doesn't give us the verb. We don't know what she wants to do. But we do notice the flowers sprouting and growing on her arms. The flowers growing out of the scars of her self-mutilation. Growth out of trauma. I mean, there, there you go. There's the symbology right there. And the words that occurred to me is become and embrace. It, we become cosmic other. The otherness that we fear and dread is what we accept as what we're becoming. Even if it's even if it's painful, okay, but we, it's literally something that can grow. It's beautiful, but it grows out of something painful. But also embracing. One thing that occurs over and over again are the lyrics of that song. Okay, first she's one, then she's two, then she's three, then she's four. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, the song uh, from Annihilation. What is that? Uh, Helplessly Hoping? Yeah. Okay. And the yes, we become. We become more. But we also connect. We embrace. And we have at the end of the Annihilation movie, we have the new Cain and the old Lena. And they embrace. And we see in each of their eyes, in both sets of eyes, we see the shimmer. I guess to finally um, end up is I just want to mention the fact that, again, each of these stories was picked for a very specific reason. We knew we were going to start with The Outsider. It's one of Lovecraft's earliest stories. And it's a story that we felt was indicative of the new weird. Because, again, it's one of those stories that reads completely different today in the modern day than it did at the time it was originally written. I thought it was a perfect example of, of the new weird. We, we then moved on to the color out of space, something I kind of wanted, wanted to drop. Or actually, we, went, we moved on to Call of Cthulhu. Um, we had to include Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu is the most famous um, uh, work by H.P. Lovecraft. It's literally what the Orange Book is called. We had to include that one. And again, it brings up the idea of this mythology and this other world and things of that nature. Uh, I wanted to drop Color Out of Space. Peter was like, no, we can't drop out of Color Out of Space. That has the the unholy Pentecost, that has the belonging, that has the becoming, the seeming destruction, which actually results in, in, a, in a greater becoming of the world around us. Very much paralleling, um, again, what um, Alex Garland did in Annihilation. Far more so than the, the book, or as Peter keeps mentioning, the original shooting script, which, again... Uh, you guys may have, you don't have to read, but um, uh, just to let you know that he he kept adapting it more and more towards an adaptation of the color out of space as as time went on to some extent. And, um, yeah, the, the idea the idea of being yes, there's total destruction. The shimmer itself seems to be dead. It seems to be defeated. The same thing in the color out of space. The valley, Nahum's valley, seems reduced to ash, but then light erupts out of the well and we see the beginning of that pentecost idea we have these uh all these points of light all these little flames of light and then they rise in unison and we have a kind of cosmic homecoming and at the end of uh, of our movie annihilation we know that the shimmer okay may have ceased to exist in its original form but it has moved from outside in. It's come from outdoors in. It's gone from the macrocosm to the microcosm of two people becoming, okay, and embracing. Um, do we then move on to the shot over in's mouth? It's something Peter thought about dropping because he goes, it's very much like the outsider. And I said, well, no, it addresses racism much more than the outsider does. And eventually he came away to my thinking as well. Um, we both of us agreed we had to include the white people. Um, that was a story that both of us had really struggled with. In fact, the entire class had struggled with back in 2018. And I think we understand the story a lot better now 
than we did uh, five or six years ago. And I, I think I think the new weird is a, is a way of, of, of understanding that. Because one of the problems that the class had is the class was very much looking at it from the new weird. And they were like, how could the girl be, Peter kept asking in the class, how can the girl be evil? And the class was like, she's not evil. She's wonderful. And they killed her. I can't believe they killed her. You know, <laughs> and that's and that's a new weird um, sensibility. The, yeah. the, the students were on to the new weird. And we kept trying to explain the wraparound story. Ambrose's discussion of what evil with a capital E means. And he uh, Ambrose is making the point about innocence. OK, and it's a valid it's a valid point for understanding cosmic otherness and for empowerment that th those are but what they the students wanted to do is they wanted to express their enthusiasm for everything that she was becoming okay and they saw the empowerment and now we better understand that ourselves uh we dropped a couple of writers we dropped um robert e howard who i mentioned a few times as part of the lovecraft circle we um uh, both Peter and I really love him. I include someone called Lord Dunsinane in my original one. Well, Dunsinane was a weird writer, but he was a more a whimsical, more of a, he was more of the fairy tale aspect of, 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 of the weird. Um, Peter um, rightly said, nope, no Dunsinane this, this year. And it, it's true. It, it's, it, it, his themes are quite different than the themes we eventually picked for the class. We decided to go with CL Moore, um, mostly because we thought she had a new perspective on things. This was the first of the minority writers of, of the weird that we, we tackle. Again, when we come to um, Macon, when we talk we come to Lovecraft, we're talking about white males, you know, um, cis males. So one of the things that C.L. Moore brought was the new perspective. And that really started, I thought it was served as a good bridge to the new weird in many ways. We both agreed on that. Um we we struggled. There is what there's probably what a fifty stories in here, Peter. In this book, there's a uh, lot. In that in that particular volume, they were on the shorter side. There could be as many as fifty, but there's certainly. Uh, it looks actually, stories. I'm looking at it looks like thirty, maybe thirty. Okay, stories. They got they got they got thirty. Yeah, um, that, yeah. Peter decided to go with Shawgoss and Bloom because Shawgoss and Bloom is probably, as Peter said, it's it's one of the most important. It's certainly the most critically acclaimed, probably, of the stories in, in here. Um, and it's the most critically acclaimed and most important uh, story uh, in terms of new weird written post 9 11, yeah. you know, in the last 20 years. Okay. This, this, this is a, this is a, uh, it's really hard to beat Shogoths and Bloom in terms of touching all our bases for everything that we associate with empowerment in the new weird. And to tell you the truth, we were a little lazy and we went, what else, what other story do you want to do? Let's just do the other Elizabeth Bear story is really what we went with. She has two stories in here. She has she has Mongoose and she has Shagos in Bloom. And we just went with, let's, instead of confusing the students by doing other authors, let's get to Elizabeth Bear again, even though she did write the story with Elizabeth Monet or Monet. It was, it was Sarah Monet. Sarah Monet. Um, and again, the nice, I'm glad we did include it because it, it really hammered home the idea of normalization, I think. That particular story, Mongoose, and how There's normalization this... of cosmic otherness. Yeah. Yes. Now it's pest control. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then again, that led us into Lovecraft Country, which we've talked about in the fact that Peter, Peter said, if we're going to do the empowerment model, we have to do Lovecraft Story. I mean, Lovecraft Country, a Lovecraft Story. Okay. Uh, and uh, again, I was hesitant for that one. Again, and then we finished it up with Annihilation, where. Um, I was talking about the new weird. I said, you know what a really good example of new weird is? It's Annihilation. And Peter Lewis looked at me like, what? You mean that body of horror film that I watched? What are you talking about? And I made him sit down and watch it again and, and, and pointed out certain things about it. I said, it is empowerment. It is very much a story about, about women at the forefront to begin with. But it's also about, it's about change. It's about that transformation that we see. And he agreed with me. And that's how we decided to do this class. Uh, if you guys want to, go ahead and comment on this video what you thought get out of the class, if you got anything out of the class. This is going to be a more a longer rambling um, type uh, uh, type uh, video. We've, we were mostly repeating a lot of the things we've already said in the other videos, but that's okay. I want to, again, uh, pull back the curtain a little bit, let you guys know why we decided to do certain things. You can thank us for from taking the original 30 stories we had and limiting it down to, to just 12. But again, those original 30s were stories were just like, 
okay, what are the best stories of the weird is really all we were looking at. This time, we were really trying to focus down on what are we trying to say is the overall theme? What are we trying to say about this overall theme of empowerment, transformation, normalization, reversal? And, and it's interesting because a lot of, as I mentioned before, a lot of these themes came about as we were doing this class. Um, me and Peter were able to discover these things as we were reviewing this stuff over and over again. We, we talked about this class for two years before yeah, we, yeah. before we propose, proposed it. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, it was 20, it was the spring, I believe, spring, I believe of 2018. And then we just forgot about the weird for a few years until Ryan kept bringing it up. And so we talked about it for a couple of years and we kept talking about it right up until the beginning of the course. And we've been talking about it after the course too, because we've made discoveries just by doing these videos, by going through and reading the story five times over and taking copious notes. We began to see certain things and decide, well, let's talk about this. Let's talk about that. Sometimes, I hate to admit it, sometimes I came up with stuff in the middle of the video suddenly, or Peter would ask me a question before we started the video and I let it mull around in my head. And eventually by the time we get to the video, I am able to answer his question. Yes, it's 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 been it's been a wild ride, and we've been learning things over the course of these videos, just in our discussions, and um, coming to a little better understanding with each video. I hope uh, an unfolding thing, yeah. and um, I, I feel like in the end, the new weird has taken cosmic otherness and has made it a vehicle for transformation, a vehicle for celebrating difference, celebrating celebrating the things, okay, that make us different as people, okay, but looking at them as empowerment, and looking at them as something to get excited about. In other words, We've taken the issues, okay, that were supposed to be a thing of dread, okay, in the old weird, okay, and miscegenation, you know, the taboo of racial mixing. Patriarchy, yeah. Okay, patriarchy, okay, all these, all these things, okay, but we have looked at, we have looked at cosmic otherness now not as something to fear, but as something to embrace, just as the outsider comes to embrace the thing that makes him an outsider, and in doing so, it finds a new identity and a new sense of belonging, which is what happens at the end of the shadow over Innsmouth. Okay, miscegenation, that taboo of racial mixing, it's not the problem. It's the vehicle. It's the salvation. It's the it's the means towards the end that produces that prospect of immortality for the unnamed narrator. That rhapsodic ending. That vision of a new life. Okay, the call of the grandmother and and the unnamed narrator's dreams. All those very positive things come from embracing cosmic otherness. Well, maybe we should end it right there. I think we should end it there. Thank, thank you so much for taking this class. Thank you for your feedback you've given. And again, if you guys want to on this last video, please talk to each other. Please, you know, leave leave comments and stuff like that. We'd love to see what you guys think about the class. And uh, hopefully we'll do this again sometime, Peter.